What's going on guys, Beastly Gamer and Kate. And today we're welcoming you guys back to Beauty and the Beast. We got some excellent Call of Duty Ghost footage and uh, at the end of the show we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to have some funny would you rather questions. And I want you guys to actually participate with the would you, would you rathers. Now you don't have to do them all, but I want to see it in the comment section. Some kind of feedback. Answer some of these questions. Let me know how you feel about you know some of these insanely funny would you rather's. What's going on, girl? What you been up to? Um, same old, same old, really. Just playing a little bit of Call of Duty. You've been playing COD. Um, what what else have you been playing? Just Call of Duty? Yeah. Well, so far, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was reading an article today on uh on msmagazine.com and basically what it's saying is 50 actually 61 percent of uh, people who game are women now really females are taking over uh, and, but the thing is women are really treated like second-class citizens when it comes to gaming and we're not it, taken seriously <clears throat> I'm sorry not 61 women make up 45 percent of gamers uh, and um, they're, they're actually habitual buyers they buy all the games they go out and do the same thing the guys do, but like tell tell some of the viewers what happened to you a few days ago. We were playing Call of Duty, and uh, the guys wanted to talk to you, so you put the headphones on. What what? How do guys treat girls in games? They, did they take you serious? Because I wasn't listening. Um, no, they just try to crack jokes and ask if you want to have, go over their house and just all kinds of stupid stuff. They. Even if you're beaten up, even if you're higher ranked on the scoreboard, they don't. Uh... So it's no respect. It's like Rodney Dangerfield. Um, this is a, a tweet from the feminist frequency. Now I'm not. I'm not. I don't like feminists because feminists they seem to go a little overboard. They don't like women being women. Women are sensual beings, right? Women like to appear sexy, but feminists they want to strip women down to the bare bones and make a woman basically unattractive. You don't show your femininity. I think it kind of goes against nature, so I'm not into feminists. But the feminist frequency tweeted um, about E3 and uh, for the press conference of last year, and they said, um, "Thanks for revealing exactly no video games with fe featuring female protagonists." And so people responded back. Um, Nick Dode tweeted back, "Female protagonists uh, aren't as interesting as males in the gaming world. Get used to it." Seth Forsman said. Women don't belong in video games. Rashid said, what did you expect? Cooking and cleaning games in a console launch reveal. And the list goes on. These people basically murdered the, the feminists. But it's not just feminists playing video games. There are regular chicks. And every time that I've noticed you playing a video game, you get disrespect. Guys are talking shit. and, and it, Yeah, it's always that. And, and that's, I don't think that'll end. I think guys have this uh, you know superiority complex when it comes to gaming. Hopefully that'll change one day. Uh, I don't think that necessarily we got to see a whole bunch of female protagonists. I mean, they are fun to play with. I enjoy looking at the female more than looking at a male. But I don't think that they need to do that just for, you know, um, to make it, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Fair. Not so much Overcompensate. fair. Overcompensate. No, um, politically correct. You know, when people complain, people, you know, the, the society wants to fix their ills. And I don't think you'll be able to fix every ill. But it's just, it struck me as kind of weird that, you know, when a female's playing a game, like Kate's pretty good at Call of Duty. She she ain't the beast of the gamer, but she's a beast of gamer's wife. And uh, she is good at Call of Duty. She murders guys and, and, I she handle get, my own. and she gets a lot of basically people talking shit. Now, we're going to move on real quick, guys. I want to talk about some of, some E3 2014 predictions. And uh, I want you guys' feedback because there's going to be a lot going on this E3. I think Microsoft's going to pull out a lot during this E3. They got some uh, first party games that they've already announced that nobody knows about. And then you got things like a new Gears of War game. They got Halo coming. You know, I mean, I think that new IPs are really going to be the thing that wins this year. I don't think that, you know, falling back on the old, uh, you know, IPs are going to be the formula to pull in new gamers because we've had so much of it. Of course, old time-tested titles like God of War are mm -hmm. definitely going to sell systems. Uncharted. Yeah. So these are some predictions. I want to, you know, spew some out. You guys let me know what you think about them. I think Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to be, um, the gameplay is going to be shown. I think we're going to see a lot of footage from The Order. 
1886. Uh, I think deep down is going to be shown. Uh, hopefully they they have Drive Club, you know, fixed. We're going to get more exclusives. They'll probably be making another little big planet for the PS4. I want to see, um, you know, something awesome, some new IP for the Vita that's a um, not, you know, a, a down trotted version of a PS3 game, but I want to see a triple A, kind of like Killzone Mercenary was. Mm. Something that will, you know, make the, the Vita a worthwhile console, something to keep it fresh and keep it new rather than porting down other games. I don't mind importing them down. You better believe if they ported down The Last of Us, I'd buy it. Yeah. And, well, and, I'd get a Kingdom Hearts game too. Right? Mm, yeah. Well, who knows? Th there's a lot of speculation about a new Crash Bandicoot game, you know, by Naughty Dog. Who knows? Um, a potential Spyro game. These are old classics from the, you know, We're trying to redo. Yeah, from the early 2000s, and, and I think a, a good Crash would be really phenomenal on the PS4. It would be a graphically completely different type of game, but they have yeah, to go I back to the, Crash. They have to go back to the basics on it. Um, I think, like I said, Gears of Wars, Gears of War 4 would be a no-brainer for uh, you know E3 because Microsoft sold the Xbox One on this TV shit, and not everybody's into it. And it, and it is at this point that people want games for the Xbox One. Of course, they're going to talk about the Halo TV show, which may or may not be exciting for people. The new Halo game, Halo 5, uh, Project Spark, which is a very nice, uh, well, it's, it's a very creative game, Project Spark. And, and they showed a lot of that last year. Haven't seen too much of it this year. That'll be something to draw in a lot more people, you know, playing the Xbox One. Um... I'm really excited to see what they're going to do with the Gears of War game. Now, I heard, I read in an article a few days ago, they're saying the Gears of War on the Xbox One is going to be graphically the best game on the next-gen consoles, period. So, if they're working on this game and they, they're saying things like that, I'm all for it. I'm, I'm really excited to see that. Okay, um, I think we're going to see more Smash Brothers for the Nintendo Wii. Wii U, I keep saying Wii. Um, <laughs> I don't want another 2D Mario. I want a Mario Brothers for the Wii U that is reminiscent of Mario 64, which is the best 3D Mario ever made. I want to see gameplay from a, the Zelda game on the Wii U. You know, I want to see Metroid on the Wii U. I want to see these games. I want to see the games that people are excited about when they when they say the name Nintendo. I don't want to keep waiting. Okay, there's uh, been rumor of Majora's Mask getting a, a 3D remake. Kind of the same way that um, the the uh, the Legend of Zelda remake came out. So if they're going to do that, that's going to you know that's going to make some money. And a Majora's Mask 3D remake that would look nice probably on the 3DS and on the Wii U. Make some money. Um, <laughs> there's been rumors of the Dreamcast 2, which I believe is absolute bullshit. I want to see. Uh, Project Morpheus. I want to see actual gameplay. I want to see the mechanic. I want to see how well that works. Um, I hope that we get news on Shinmu. Shinmu has been shitted on, and I think Shinmu 3 would be great for everybody to see. You know, as far as uh, RPGs and, and nostalgia alone, Shinmu would sell millions uh, of, of copies, especially if they did it right. I think we're going to see uh, Final Fantasy 15 was used to be Final Fantasy 13 Versus, but they changed the name of it. The game looks awesome. I'm super stoked for that game. Have you you saw that game, right? You mean the trailer of it? Yeah, the trailer. A while back. It's it's. Well, it's, we, nobody really knew what it was. Yeah, well, we knew what it, it it was. You could tell what it was, but they didn't say what it was. Well, it was Final Fantasy Versus 13 at first, and you know it came out. It was announced when Final Fantasy 13 came out, but. They kept pushing it back until they finally changed the name last year to Final Fantasy 15. But the game looks like Advent Children. You know, you know the oh, Final okay, Fantasy yeah. 7 Advent Children. The game looks and plays very similar to that. Uh, so I'm excited to see that. I want to see The Last Guardian. I, I was just going to say that. You talk too much. <clears throat> I mean, I, I'm keeping the show rolling. If you want to talk, go ahead. I want to hear you talk. Oh, I was just going to say I want to hear something about The Last Guardian. I mean, it's been going for years. Yeah, that game's been in, in, you know, in production for years. And it looks like it'll be awesome. Well, or has team, potential to be awesome. Team Ego lost a, a critical member. Just like Naughty Dog, they lost their art director. They lost Amy Hennig. They lost one of the, the, the directors. 
another director of, of, of the, the their games. I'm trying to remember the guy's name. Jer- I think it's Jeremy. I can't remember. But you guys know what I'm talking about. They're losing people left and right. And then uh, Team Eco, who's making The Last of Us, one of their pivotal the members. Guardian. I mean, The Last Guardian. One of their pivotal members left as well. So that game has been, uh, you know, kind of on the back burner. Of course, it is coming out. Hopefully, it comes out and lives up to, uh, you know, the standards of Eco and Shadow of the Colossus, which I'm going to be playing for Throwback Thursday because that game is pretty fucking awesome. Half-Life. We need a new Half-Life game, guys. Um, I, I There's nothing else I can say about that. I think Half-Life is a no-brainer. They need to show a teaser and they need to show uh, a render, something to get people excited. I think they're going to show uh, some Steam stuff, you know, the Steam boxes. And, and the you know probably oh, the, the yeah, console probably be a, the a console versions I want to see Fallout 4 Fallout 4 I'm, uh, honestly I would love to see Fallout 4 or a new Elder Scrolls game for next gen consoles only that pushes the bar pushes the envelope and um, you know something that will just get people's blood boiling blood rushing I just absolutely feel that would be pivotal if they get one of those games Either one. Fallout 4 is probably more of a fan favorite, but if they if they were able to push that out, I think that that would be an amazing moment at E3. It wouldn't be as big as last year's E3, but it would be a damn good moment. Okay, guys, now it's time for me to do some of these funny would-you-rathers. You guys, make sure you respond to these questions. I might do three or four of them. You guys let me know if you like this segment. If you do like it, I'll do it again in the future. Now I'm going to ask Kate, would you rather be four foot five? Or five or, or seven foot seven. I'd rather be seven foot seven. Really, you'd be a giant. Right now, I'm five two. I'm just so sick of being short. Can't even reach stuff in the top cupboard. Would you rather have legs as long as fingers, or would you rather have fingers as long as legs? <laughs> fingers as long as legs. I have to pick one. Yep. Oh, that'd be stupid. Probably the legs as long as fingers. I could be in a wheelchair. That's fucked. All right. <laughs> would you be? Would you rather be able to run 100 miles per hour, or fly 10 miles per hour? Fly, definitely. I don't care how fast I can fly. At least I can fly. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. That'd be fucking awesome. Would you rather sweat mayo, or, or have to poop a softball? <laughs> oh God, I don't know. That's so stupid. Part yeah. of the mayonnaise. Oh, oh God, you ain't sleeping with me. Um. Let's see, I'm going to skip that one. That's lame. That's lame. Um, would you rather be sexually attracted to a fruit or have permanent Cheeto dust on your fingers? <laughs> Cheeto dust. <laughs> Everything. You ain't touching my stuff. Why not? It won't come off. It's oh permanent. Oh, my God. Um, like fingernail polish. Let me see. Would you rather speak any language fluently or be able to talk to animals? Oh, man. Both. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, think about what it for a minute. Rather? I mean, we, we got a little bit of time here. Think, what would I rather do? I would rather... Um, I mean, if you can speak any language, you can just about do anything. If you could speak any language, of course you could talk to anybody. You'd be able to get the best job in the world. Yeah. Uh, you know, you could be in communication. You know, somebody comes from Ethiopia, you're talking to them. It, it really wouldn't matter. Speaking of speaking to animals, I, I have a cat that needs to shut up. Shut up, Gigi! Um, if you could talk to her right now, though, she would understand <laughs> you. <laughs> well, see, the thing is, personally, I'd pick talking to an animal. I would, pick, I would pick the language fluently. Speak any language. Please, I'd get a translator and then be able to speak to any animal. Because, you know, that's a that's something that no one's ever experienced, what an animal Yeah, feeling. well, then we'd be set. I got the languages, you got the animals, we're good to go. No, you can only pick one. If I pick, <laughs> yeah, you got one, I got one. Nope, I'd leave you immediately as soon as I talk For to For an you. animal? Yep, I talked to one of them gorillas with the big red booties. Hey, what's happening, mama? <laughs> no, uh, I think, honestly, talking to an animal would be more fun. Go outside and see a dog or a cat, just start yapping, and all of a sudden, you know, they're, they're feeling good. I'd definitely pick talking to an animal. I think that would be <laughs> an awesome power. Okay, um, <laughs> Would you rather only be able to whisper or only be able to shout? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess shout since you say I whisper now. You do whisper. I've mean, been yelling at you all the time. Just doesn't to... her voice sound like butterfly wings, like flapping in the wind? No, no. <laughs> I just don't have bass in my voice. I'm a woman and white, so. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, uh, actually, I really like the way you sound. Uh, it compliments me because I'm a big mouth black dude. Well, thank you. Well, look, guys, we're going to wind this up. We hope you guys enjoyed our, our little different Beauty Segment and the Beast. Today. Yeah, uh, those are some pretty fun questions. Yeah, but you didn't <laughs> answer none of them. Because I was asking the lady. You guys be sure to comment and let us know how you feel about this segment. And uh, check out some of the other videos. We'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>